In this section, we're going to learn how you can track changes to an entities in a collection over time without writing code to detect which of these items has changed. This capability is provided as part of Delta Query, and it's a feature in Microsoft Graph. So we're going to see how we can also combine change notifications and track changes to really cut down the number of requests. Many custom applications have the need to track and replicate changes between two systems. So for example, updates to user information in the master Azure AD directory for an organization, such as office addresses, manager, and contact phone numbers need to be recorded in the time reporting systems or maybe another back office platform. And one way developers can monitor the source system for changes is by polling the system to detect changes. Now, as we've previously discussed, an alternative to polling Developers can leverage change notifications in Microsoft Graph to be notified when entities change. Now, while this addresses one part of the problem, what happens in the case where a change notification subscription expires? Well, in this case, your application may miss changes to entities when the subscription was not active. In addition, what happens if a change notification wasn't fired by Microsoft Graph because of a system error? In these cases, your application would, need, would have to temporarily rely on the polling pattern. But there's another option that developers can leverage for certain endpoints that Microsoft in Microsoft Graph that, when combined with change notifications, can enable apps to avoid the polling pattern in a robust and fault-tolerant way. And this is done using something called track changes, and it's also known as Delta Query. Delta Query is supported on email messages, groups, users, and the events object in Microsoft Graph. The way it works is that an application submits a GET request to a particular endpoint. Let's just say it's slash users. In this request, the endpoint has also included the slash delta function that's been added to the end of the URL. Microsoft Graph will respond with a list of all the users in the collection, just like a normal HTTP GET request. However, it'll include a new property, odata.delta link, in the response. The value of this property is a link that your application should save for future use. And at some point in the future, your app can use this Delta Link URL to submit the same request to the user's endpoint, except the response will only include those items that have changed since the first call was submitted. The second response will include a new Delta Link that your application should save, replacing the previous one that you had. The application can then use this new value to retrieve all the changes since that second request was submitted. And each time you make a request, the Delta Link will change that allows your application to only retrieve those items that have changed since the previous request. Let's look at a sample request. The following request is going to get a list of all the users from Microsoft Graph. So you can see I'm going to the slash users slash delta link property. Now, the first time this gets submitted, I get a full list of all the users in the directory. But notice that I have an additional thing in the response. So I'm not including all of the users coming back in this request. I'm just focusing on the, um, the, the response properties that I'm interested in uh, for this topic. Notice the response that includes the Delta Link URL. If there are multiple pages of data that are being returned, the Delta Link is always going to be on the last page. Now, your apps can use change notifications and track changes both together to create a robust, reliable, and performant experience. Change notifications are going to notify your app when something changes with a collection supported by Microsoft Graph. And when Microsoft Graph notifies your application that something changed, instead of your app requesting all of the information from Microsoft Graph on the entity that triggered the notification, instead, it can use the Delta Query to retrieve all the changes that have happened since the last request. So with this pattern, your app could first create a change notification subscription for all the changes on the user's endpoint to Microsoft Graph. And then immediately after that, creating that subscription, the application can request all users from Microsoft Graph as a Delta Query. After processing all the users in the response, your app would then save the Delta Query link. Now in the future, the change notifications are going to be used to notify your app that something changed. But you can use this as just the trigger to resubmit the Delta Query for all changes that have happened since the first request or one of the later requests. This way, your app can be assured to not miss any changes that happen if, there, if there's uh, when the subscription expires or when there's an unforeseen error in the processing of or sending the change notification. To make it as fault tolerant as possible, it's recommended to have a scheduled process check for a valid subscription and renew it if the expiration time is coming up soon. And you can also schedule the Delta Query request to occur on regular intervals to cover the scenario where there was a gap in an active subscription or notification 
uh, of a change was not received for some unknown reason.